Oh, hi. My name is David Jarman. I'm with uh, Visionary AI. Uh, would you like to get a demo of our uh, technology, find out about what we're doing here at Visionary? Yeah, so, so what are you showing here? It says uh, Qualcomm plus Visionary AI. What's happening? Yes, so I can show you a demonstration of that. What we're doing is we're changing the way that images are processed instead of using the mathematical pipeline of the last 40 to 50 years. We're using machine learning to model the image sensor. And the most important part of the image sensing pipeline is the denoising. To, so removing the natural noise in any image sensor. What I'm showing here is this is uh, Qualcomm's Gen 3 uh, Snapdragon platform, development platform, running the latest ours. one, right? Um, this is not the one latest, the latest one. one. This is yeah. uh, at least one generation older. And the, this is a uh, OEM phone that is based on the same chipset with exactly the same Im image sensor, the Sony IMX766, uh, which is a mainstream consumer image sensor. I might have the same in this one, actually. It's the Xiaomi. So, uh, ah, okay. so, so then you just have your app running? Uh, it's, it's a uh, lower down, closer to the metal. We integrated with Qualcomm. Ah, We're okay. pre-processing the raw image data to remove the noise using machine learning. And what I have here is a, uh, in my box, it's basically a portable darkroom. So with my portable darkroom, if I take the reference phone, you can see that uh, this is 4K30 video. When this is, uh, gets dark, it's a bit challenged. However, with using our software, we can raise the gain Normally, this would produce a lot of noise from the sensor with this uh, longer exposure. We remove that noise so we get a crisp image. Uh, there's no ghosting. There's no artifacts. Um, so we have, a, we have a very clean image. This is 4K 30 video running in real time, about quarter frame of latency with uh, extremely low power, less than just, 200 milliwatts. Do you just kind of like uh, guess what is there or that's not what's happening? It's we, like uh, uh, you can actually see it. Well, we are doing both temporal and spatial noise removal. Uh, we're doing this by modeling, by simply modeling the noise profile of the sensor using machine learning. So uh, essentially we're using statistical techniques, uh, which is a much more robust way to do modeling than the mathematical modeling that's been used in, uh, in hardware behind image sensors going back uh, way before the contemporary CMOS sensor. So, so there's definitely AI happening. Yes, yes. So we're using AI. We're not, it's not AI magic to create scenes, uh, we're, but we're using AI to intelligently model the imperfections in any sensor to uh, perfect the image, uh, make either a mainstream sensor like this more powerful or uh, we have customers that uh, have professional cameras with the, the uh, highest end sensors and uh, with more processing power, we can create a, a, a professional still image or a, um, a video, video image at a high frame rate. And you were showing that potentially this could be on more affordable phones to get better low light performance in yes. video. Or, or on a high-end phone to increase the performance of a high-end phone even higher. You can think of it like steroids for cameras. So we're pre-processing the data and making the, uh, the image sensor perform better uh, under the most challenging conditions, either low light. Um, in our latest products, we're merging multiple images so that uh, we, we can remove the uh, backlight effects. For example, in a, a video conference when there's a uh, silhouette effect, if you're behind a, a very strong backlight, like a window with the sun shining in. What and is happening there? This is why we're at Display Week. This is Lenovo's uh, Yoga I Slim i9. 
which is their flagship laptop, very light uh, laptop, uh, the, uh, showing their latest technology introduced in January this year at CES. And the, uh, one of the unique features is this crisp OLED panel with no bezel. And also, there is, when we turn the camera off, there's no notch. So oh. the camera is actually under the display. We actually, uh, physically, they had to, uh, to put a uh, uh, extra piece of plastic uh, to incorporate the camera, but the camera is not in a notch like, like, a, like a normal uh, PC. It's, it's actually in the uh, integrated underneath the camera. And then when we're using the camera, we carve out a, uh, they, they carve out a, uh, uh, so, so you improve the performance the of their quality? Yes. <laughs> so it's extremely challenging. Uh, Lenovo found that uh, working with, uh, in, this is working on Intel's Meteor Lake processor, uh, image processor, um, very difficult to clean up the noise that's injected from the display and uh, making a, a normal image coming through the uh, display. And so you can see that we've got a, a, a crisp image in real time with us doing the, the pre-processing. Nice. And uh, this, is, this is a copy of the, uh, this is the settings. If we go into the settings, you can see uh, Lenovo uh, gave us credit for uh, enabling uh, this camera because they told us without this technology removing the noise, they would not have been able to release this type of feature nice. with the camera behind the screen. So there's a lot of opportunities for uh, many, technology. Many, this, uh, so what we're showing here is mainly consumer focused. You can imagine the highest calling is in an application, for example, industrial inspection, uh, automotive applications for like nighttime autonomous uh, drones. Uh, drones, autom automatic braking in nighttime conditions where uh, the vehicle's moving very fast, but we have to have very crisp uh, images augmented to, uh, to LiDAR and other uh, sensors uh, to, to get very pre precise measurements to know when to do this automatic braking. Medical applications, uh, medical applications are limited in the space, so the sensor has to be very small so we can produce a very crisp image with a tiny sensor and even fuse together multiple image, small image sensors uh, to create a much more robust image. So these self-driving cars that might not have LiDAR but only have cameras, you could totally boost them, make yes, them better. Yes, uh, under low light or high light conditions, another technology that we're uh, exploring with some lead <coughs> customers is using multiple cameras to remove lens distortion. For example, in a, uh, in a dash cam, where the dash cam is behind the screen and the, uh, there's contamination on the screen, either snow or, or uh, dust or rain or the wipe, wipers moving, um, or uh, a camera that's on the, the front of the vehicle and there's, uh, there's uh, display, debris or we need to see through fog or rain, for example. Do you partner with camera sensor companies or do you partner with the chipset? We partner like with uh, further down in the supply chain, but not, uh, not with the sensor level, but at the, uh, at the SOC level. So uh, we work with Qualcomm, we work with Intel, uh, we work with NVIDIA. Uh, we have uh, other partners in automotive that are uh, suppliers to the kind of uh, like tier, Tesla's tier, and stuff. Tier ones and to the to the OEMs. You could potentially partner with others like MediaTek or somebody else. Uh, of course, anyone that's yeah. making the uh, the the SOC, we can integrate um, in because we're we're uh, capable of running in software. Uh, or we can be integrated into hardware and custom custom hardware highly efficiently. Uh, is there like now potential for these SOC vendors to see what you do and say, 
they need to boost the performance for the next gen to do even more of this stuff. Yes. So yes. to have even more performance on the next year's model. A absolutely. And I think for for your audience, what's really what's really exciting is that this classical mathematical pipeline of the last 40, 50 years is transitioning and these techniques using machine learning for modeling uh, will be the way that uh, we're seeing images as consumers in, in the next generation of devices within easily within the next uh, three or five, five years. All image pipelines will be based on technology uh, either from visionary AI or similar technology uh, for yeah. companies that are uh, overcoming some of the challenges that we've already addressed. Do you have competitors around the world? Where um, are you based? Mostly, we don't have, we're based in Israel. Uh, we're a startup, uh, we're in our fifth year. And uh, we, uh, like we're seeing here, we have uh, customers in mass production, in consumer applications, uh, industrial automotive, uh, professional cameras will take a little bit longer. Um, the uh, 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 focus of uh, the company is on um, pr uh, perfecting, Im both augmenting the existing images but also generating the next generation of uh, Im image pipeline that will go into future uh, silicon platforms. Could you be in partnership with Qualcomm, like for example, like an Android update that just m improves the performance of a whole bunch of phones out there, suddenly they get visionary AI technology if they, if they haven't had it activated yes, already? Yes, what we do in the case of uh, Android phones, we need to work with the OEMs, because each OEM is integrating a different sensor. Our models are trained per sensor. So we need to work with the OEMs. But uh, yes, ideally, um, when we have a... It could be uh, like a surprising a, firmware update. Yes. You get a new update, boom. You get much better low light performance. Yes, yes, yes. And then uh, we're working on uh, incremental improvements where we handle uh, more challenging lighting conditions, like mixed lighting, like uh, like the sunset, or uh, strong backlighting, like in a Zoom call. If you've ever done a Zoom call where the sun is setting in the window behind you, and uh, the person you're talking to can't see your face because there's burnout of the of the image, so we take multiple exposures. Uh, we merge those images using our infrastructure using our AI to uh, merge the exposure and get the best, best of the short and long exposures so you can see the see your face, but also have a clear image of the background. It's like HDR video. Yes, yes, it is essentially enhanced HDR beyond what the capability of the sensor is. And I'm filming, for example, a little DJI camera, which is awesome, but yes. there's always ways to improve. For example, there's shadows under your eyes because the exposure not always, like I'm putting all automatic, right? Yes. But it'd be nice if some software updates improves that even further. Yes. And it all depends if you are compatible with whatever chip they're using. Ex ex exactly, exactly. So that's. Uh, we engage with the with the OEMs. We're partnered uh, with the uh, silicon platform supplier like like Qualcomm. Qualcomm is uh, of, of course a major supplier to, to DJI. All right, cool. Thanks a lot. Great, great. Thanks.